We're here with David Rowe, Professor of Law at the University of Miami School of Law in Coral Gables, Florida. Professor Rowe, can you speak about the Prime Minister's announcement that Harold Brady would be expelled from the Jamaica Labor Party? It was a surprising announcement because of the timing. However, it was not unanticipated as it appears that Mr. Brady and key members of the Jamaica Labour Party have been at odds for some time relating to the Manat affair. Is Mr. Brady something of a scapegoat? Probably. He's being blamed by the Prime Minister for exceeding the scope of his brief in the Manat affair, but I do not think that Mr. Brady is the only person at fault with respect to the Manat affair. I believe that we have to look deeper who made the political decision to lobby on behalf of essentially Christopher Koch to the White House in the United States. Who is it who spent the money for that issue to be aggressively lobbied in the United States, why was either the Jamaica Labour Party or the government of Jamaica lobbying on behalf of an individual who is considered by many Jamaicans to be a serious criminal? And why were such lobbying efforts extended to the point where it has now become both a national and international scandal? What will be the political ramifications of this? They can only be negative for the Jamaica Labour Party since they have not yet explained to civil society why this lobbying effort commenced, who paid for it, why the Solicitor General seemed to have been taking instructions from a member of the Jamaica Labour Party, why the Solicitor General was acting as if he was Mr. Christopher Koch's attorney, why Jamaican taxpayer dollars were being used for such a horrible enterprise. This sequence of events is very disturbing. Is there any very contrary to the rule of law. Professor Rowe, is there any way for the Jamaica Labour Party to restore confidence in the Jamaican people? Well, that's a political question not really a legal question, but frequently the Jamaica Labour Party is in power and frequently when we confer trust in our legislators through the electoral process, that trust is very important to the populace. When that trust is violated by deliberate lies, then the trust is sometimes lost. And it may be very difficult for the leaders of the Jamaica Labour Party to regain the credibility that they had two or three years ago. Are there any legal ramifications for this affair in the United States? It's still possible. Well, that's the million dollar question. Uh, many of my colleagues who are either in law enforcement or who are in the academic world who have been following this lobbying crisis for some time. It has lasted for a good six months now and it has related to not only one of the most wanted individuals in the history of the Americas, Christopher Koch, but is also related to how the Jamaican Constitution operates and how we are going to, how bilateral relations between the United States and Jamaica will operate in the future and whether or not the treaty obligations of Jamaica are going to be fulfilled. Uh, I believe that the brazen violation of the extradition treaty and some of the extremely hostile and obstructive efforts to prevent Christopher Koch from being brought to justice will be viewed in the United States eventually through the telescope of law enforcement. And I believe that the views that will be obtained are not going to look good. Professor Rowe, thank you for your time.